all's gone to plan today, Japanese space agency JAXA simultaneously will launch an X-ray space telescope and a lunar lander to space. Yep, it's a big week for the moon, after the Indian space agency ISRO made history by being the first to successfully land on the south pole of the moon, where the Russian space agency Roscosmos failed just a few days earlier. So what are these two missions about? Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu, and in this week's video, we're gonna talk about JAXA's latest X-ray space telescope, GRISM, and its lunar lander, SLIM. Japan has suffered a string of bad luck with X-ray telescopes over the past. In 1993, they launched ASCA. After more than seven years of successful operation, it met a miserable end when it suffered a malfunction and had to be deorbited. Since then, they launched Suzaku in 2005, which encountered a technical failure within just a few weeks of operation. And then third, they launched Hitomi in 2016. It failed after a month of launch due to combination of human error and technical problems. Some people think that the Japanese are cursed when it comes to X-ray missions, but they're not giving up. The X-ray imaging and spectroscopy mission, GRISM, is designed to fill the gap left by Hitomi and comes at a critical time where existing X-ray missions like ESA's X-Men Newton and NASA's Chandra Space Telescopes, which are almost 25 years old and um, their sensors are degrading. Russian-German venture Irosita's fate was pushed into uncertainty after the current affairs in Russia, and ESA's successor to XMM Newton, Athena, is not coming up for another decade. It's clear there's a need for GRISM. GRISM is equipped with two main instruments. Resolve is a high-resolution microcalorimeter spectrometer, which is a kind of detector that measures the energy of X-ray photons. Whilst traditional X-ray detectors might only count the number of photons broadly classify their energies into bands, when an X-ray photon is absorbed by a microcalorimeter, it raises the temperature of the detector by a very small amount. This tiny temperature rise is proportional to the energy of the incoming X-ray photon, and measuring this temperature change can therefore provide a detailed energy spectrum of the incoming X-rays, allowing scientists to determine not only the intensity, but also the exact energy of each photon. This provides unprecedented sensitivity and spectral resolution. The energy spectrums are what will allow GRISM to study the composition and temperature of hot gas in the galaxy clusters, um, the dynamics of accretion disks around black holes, and the chemical enrichment of the universe. GRISM also houses an X-ray imaging camera, Extend, which is capable of producing X-ray images. But importantly, GRISM only operates in the soft X-ray bands, so only sensitive to energies of 0.3 to 12 kilo electron volts. The two instruments of GRISM closely resemble those of XSS and XSI that were on board of Hitomi, and this is because GRISM was developed to restore and reclaim much of the scientific potential that was lost due to the loss of Hitomi, but only in the soft X-ray bands. Notably, GRISM does not have the equivalents for Hitomi's high-energy instruments, HXI and SGD. Along for the ride on the GRISM rocket will be a moon mission called SLIM, the smart lander for investigating moon. SLIM is a 420 pound spacecraft that will test lunar landing techniques for future missions. As it makes its descent towards the moon, the lander will employ cutting edge technology inspired by facial recognition systems. And this is the technology that will enable the lander to identify lunar craters and subsequently determine its exact position using observational data previously gathered by another lunar orbiter named Selene. One of SLIM's most ambitious goals is to achieve a soft landing with an impressive accuracy of within 100 meters. And to put this into perspective, the Apollo 11 Eagle lunar module, which famously carried our astronauts to the moon's surface, had a landing accuracy 
described as an ellipse spanning 20 kilometers by five kilometers in size. The landing system also carries a 3D printed crushable aluminum foam base to help it absorb the impact when it lands. The spacecraft is targeting a landing on the slopes of Shioli Crater, which is a relatively recent impact feature spanning 300 meters in diameter. It's situated within Mare Nectaris, the moon's near side. It's believed that part of the moon's mantle is exposed on the surface here. And by studying the composition of the mantle, um, we can learn about how the moon formed and evolved. Once landed, SLIM will deploy Ali V1, a hopping rover, and Ali V2, a ball-shaped rover just eight centimeters in size. Both are equipped with cameras to help them explore the surface and send pics back of the moon. Although SLIM won't reach the lunar surface for four to six months, I'm praying that both missions are successful. There's just so much science to be done both nearby and far away. That's all for this week's video and as always thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting me. Please consider joining if you haven't already. Otherwise if you enjoyed the video please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.